Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome back to my channel, Sasha Reads, and these are some books that are coming out in June 2024. Okay, so I'm not doing a June TBR this year so i'm going to be doing our anticipated releases i've got 25 books here to show you let's just get into it okay so the first one is called london on my mind by clara alves and it's translated by nina perotta this is a queer ya that's got remnants of red white and royal blue and a cuban girl's guide to tea and tomorrow so you've got 16 year old diana has always dreamed of visiting london to walk along the times take pictures outside back in Palace, and maybe even get a glimpse of arthur prince of wales unfortunately her mother does pass away she has to leave rio de janeiro and live with her estranged father and his new family in london and one day she bumps into diana who is trying to sneak out of buckingham palace we might think that she's the same diana that prince arthur has just married either which way they start to grow closer and start exploring london together and uh, things progress from there so i'm very excited for this i love that it's got red bright and royal blue vibes because i love that book and i'm just keen for like a sapphic YA set in London. Next is One Killer Problem. This comes out on June 4th as well as the other book. This is a queer mystery thriller, uh, another YA, and it's for fans of Cara Thomas and Kit Frick. Gigi Ricky lands in detention again, but she doesn't expect the glorified study hall to be her alibi. So when she and her friends receive a mysterious email directing them to her favorite teacher, Mr. Ford's room, they find him lying in a pool of blood but calling the math teacher's death an accident doesn't add up and Gigi needs all the help she can get to find the truth. Luckily, she's friends with her high school's mystery club and so with her best friend Sean and longtime crush Mary, Gigi sets out to solve the murder. So I'm really trying to get into like why thrillers. I read The Naturals earlier this year and I enjoyed it. So I'm excited for more of that along those lines. Got a queer adult coming out on the June 4th, and that's called Napkins and Other Distractions by M.A. Wardell. This is the third in the Teachers in Love series, but because it is romance, they're all like interconnected standalones. And you've got Kent Lester, who is a out and proud principal of Leah Elementary School. But seven years after his divorce, he's ready to focus on his personal life and spread his bisexual wings. So things get off to a rocky start when Kent's first date is an uptight control freak, although that doesn't stop them from tangling some sheets. Then you got Vincent Manda, who never seems to be able to pass the friend zone. Besides, he's not sure if anyone can handle his OCD. So when the school's test scores take a nosedive, the principal finds himself under the microscope. Microso microscope. So he's forced to implement new software to monitor and collect school data, and he's horrified to discover that Vincent is heading up the project. So we've got a Killian, we've got Force Proximity, we've got one might stand. Very excited, and I really love this cover. I think it's gorgeous. Another queer YA. We've got Four Eyes and a Funeral by Farida Abike Imede and Adiba Jagadir. I've read by Adiba, I haven't read by Farida yet, but I do have Where Sleeping Girls Lie on my TBR. But this is about ex best friends Tiwa and Said. They must work together to save their Islamic center from demolition in this romantic story of rekindling and rebuilding. Another queer YA contemporary coming out in June 4th is Wish You Weren't Here by Aaron Baldwin. But Juliet and Priya, they're pretty much sworn enemies. And Juliet is very excited to get away from school and Priya because she's got the summer camp coming up. It's five weeks Priya free. But then <laughs> those dreams are shattered when Priya shows up on move-in day as her cabin mate. 
Okay, so we've got another adult romance coming out on June 4th. This one's called Match Me If You Can by Swati Hegde. We've got a young magazine writer in Mumbai. Must prove her matchmaking skills and contend with growing feelings for her close family friend in this debut Desi romance. I love how we've got a local pub owner and you've got a uh, confident fashionista. I love that cover. Purple and the oranges are just beautiful. Next is a book in a series that I'm very excited for. I read the first one earlier this year, and this is Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. So this one is focusing on Lark, who is the main character from the first book, Best Friend, and then the male main character's brother is Leather or Lachlan. And now this is another serial killer romance, but when we're reading the first book, it doesn't say that Lark is a serial killer, so I'm very... I'm wondering like what she does behind the scenes because she's like in a band or she sings or whatever. Yeah, I really liked their banter in the first book, so I'm very excited for this one. Another June 4th release, we have Cleo Evans re-releasing Broken Beginnings. Now, I know Cleo Evans from her monster romance, not so much her romantic thrillers. You have... The female main character she walks in on a masked man murdering her neighbor, so she flees back home to her small town where she meets Cameron Harlow again. Now, they were kind of rivals. He was pretty much her bully in high school, but things start to heat up between them, and then the uh, masked man finds her, and we go from there. So I'm very excited to read something very different by this author. I'm loving this cover. And I'm very excited for this re-release. The last June 4th release on my radar is The Deep Dark by Molly Knox Ostertag. I have read by this author before. She wrote The Girl from the Sea, which was like a sapphic selkie, which was very, it was very cute. And it was very, I loved it. Anyway, so this is about Magdalena Herrera, who's about to graduate from high school but she feels like an adult with serious res responsibilities. Caring for her ailing grandmother, working a part-time job, clandestine makeouts with a girl who has a boyfriend, and then there's her secret, which pulls her into the basement each night, drains her of energy, and leaves her bleeding. It is a secret that could hurt and even kill if it ever got out, like it did once before. So it doesn't really give you much, but I am very excited for this, and I hopefully I'll get to it sooner rather than later. All right, he, so we've got two June 6 releases coming out. We've got Something to Be Proud Of by Anna Zoe Quirk. This is about Imogen Quinn, who is a chaotic bisexual with dreams of becoming a stand-up comedian and crushing stereotypes about autistic people. So when she decides to put on a Pride Festival that's accessible for everyone, she enlists the help of the openly gay captain of the football team, Ollie Armstrong. Like, how does that not just sound so wholesome? Just these two out and proud queer people coming together to make a festival for everybody. Like, I'm very excited to pick this up. And then we've got Twelfth Night by Alexine Farrell Falmouth. I have read My Mechanical Romance by this author, and this looks like it's a reimagining sort of gender-swapped Twelfth Night. Viola Rays is annoyed. Her painstakingly crafted tabletop game, game campaign was shot down. Her best friend is suggesting she try being more likable. And school running back Jack Orsino, running back? Is that like a football term? <laughs> is the most like, lackadaisical student body president she's ever seen, which makes her job as VP that much harder. Vi's favorite escape from the world is the MMORPG Twelfth Night, but online spaces aren't exactly kind to girls like her. Girls who are extremely competent and have the swagger to prove it. Vi creates a masculine alter ego, choosing to play as a knight named Cesario to create a safe haven for herself. So I have a feeling that her and Jack start chatting in game, not realizing that who the other person outside of the game is, and they start to fall in love. And that sounds so much fun. I love 
that sort of secret identity trope where neither of them know who the other is IRL love that okay so we have a couple June 11th releases this first one I found out from Ali over at all I do is read she just posted a June releases video so I'll link that down below because some of these books are from that so this is the wilderness of girls by Madeline Claire Franklin it's an unflinching YA debut about a troubled teen who discovers a pack of feral girls in the woods and is swept up in the ensuing mystery. Are the wild girls of Happy Valley lost princesses from a faraway land as they believe or are they brainwashed victims of a deranged kidnapper? So it's given me sort of like fantastical vibes. It says it's an ambitious debut perfect for fans of Sadie and the Hazelwood. It crafts a gripping exploration of how the world teaches young girls to cage their wildness and what happens when they call themselves free. Like how does that not sound so good? Next, coming out in the UK and Australia, you've got Private Rights by Julia Armfield. I've yet to read Our Wives Under the Sea, but I just know I'm going to love it. So I'm very excited to pick up this next one by this author. So this is about three sisters navigating queer love and faith at the end of the world. So it looks like it's kind of dystopian where the water levels have risen and instead of people going across the land, they're all building up. To get away from the water and it looks like these three sisters isla irene and agnes their father like started that whole corporation of building up and now he has died so they've all come together to clear the grand glass house that is the pinnacle of his legacy they begin to sense the magnetic influence of their father lives on through it so soon it becomes clear that others have also taken interest in both his estate and in them and that perhaps the inheritance may not be theirs alone. So very excited for that. Another sapphic romance coming out on June 11th. We've got Director's Cut by Carlin Greenwald. After taking a guest teaching gig, Oscar winning Valeria Sullivan finds herself trapped in a battle of wits with her sexy co-professor. But can she keep her cool when things heat up in and out of the classroom? So we've got 29 year old Valeria Sullivan and I love, I love adult books when they're like near their 30s because I'm near my 30s. <laughs> and then her co-professor is Maeve Arco. Love the name Maeve. Look at this cover. It's given me... Ah, oh, that Kaufman, Leany Kaufman. I think that's the artist. She's been doing a lot of covers and I'm loving them all. She is so brilliant. Next in June 11th, we've got Curvy Girl Summer by Danielle Allen. Look at this cover. This was immediately a cover pick because we've got a beautiful black woman, a beautiful black man, and she is plus size. And oh, just, I love it so much. So you've got... Alia is determined to celebrate her 30th birthday with her boyfriend. No, with a boyfriend. After a failed blind date, the local bartender Ahmed suggests she joins a dating app. But dating app doesn't work out and you've got two best friends and a protective bartender by her side. So it looks like maybe her and the bartender might get together. Either which way. Very excited for that. This is one I think everybody has been talking about or know about it you've got Not in Love by Ali Hazelwood. Out of the three books I've read I have enjoyed two of her books so I'm not quite sure how much like when I'm actually going to pick this one up plus the love interest his name is Eli. I don't call my son Eli but it's still like a derivative so I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about that. Let's just see how it goes. And I see like the synopsis doesn't really give me much. We've got Woman in STEM. You've got like Ellie Hazelwood. She has a formula that she uses and it works for her. Everyone eats it up. So we'll find out if it's any good. Next, we've got The God and the Gumi Ho by Sophie Kim. I actually have this on Nat Kelly and I'm very excited for it. I believe this is also going to be a fairy loot pick. So keep an eye out for that. This is a delightful Korean contemporary fantasy where a fallen trickster god must pair up with a coffee slinging, shape-shifting fox to track down a demon of darkness before it devours the mortal world. 
How good does that sound? Um, so you've got Kim Honey, the once terrible Gumi Ho known as the Scarlet Fox, spends her days working at a cafe and trying not to let a certain customer irk her. And then you've got Sioka, tricks a god thrown from the heavens for his attempt at a coup. And he spends his days hunting demons and irking a particular Gumi Ho. It's a, oh, maybe it's a romantic pick, which means I might get this. Another June 11th, we've got Running Close to the Wind by Alexandra Rowland. I have A Taste of Golden Iron by this author. Haven't read it yet, but that's very queer. So I'm expecting this to be super queer as well. You've got Avra Helvachi, a former female. I'm just got a parcel. Hang on. I just got some books, but I won't unbox that. Where were we? Avra Halfici, who's a former field agent of the Arasti Ministry of Intelligence, has accidentally stolen the single most expensive secret in the world, and the only place to flee with a secret that big is the open sea. <sighs> Given me pirate vibes. To find a bio with deep enough pockets, Avra must ask for help from his on-again, off-again ex, the pirate captain to vary our as Hafar. <sighs> so, queer pirates? That just sounds so good. I'm very excited for that. All right, so June 18th, we've got the newest Aquakia Messy novel called Little Rot. So this is a thriller. Very exciting. So you've got five friends trying to outrun and outmatch a powerful underground world. The elite underbelly of a Nigerian city, a breakup that starts a spiral, one weekend, a party that goes awry, a tangled web of sex and lies and corruptions that need, leaves no one unscathed. Little Rot is a whirling journey through the city's dark side, told through the eyes of five people, each determined to run from the twisted powers out to destroy them. <sighs> a quake here, Mezzi. I love most of their books. I did not like Death of Vivek OG, but I've loved literally everything else that this author has created. So this is going to be an auto buy. And literally with each novel, with each creation, A Quakey and Mezzi shows their genius as a storyteller, as a visionary force who has created a thrilling tale of sex, power, and deviance in Little Rot. You won't be able to look away. Now this next one is a horror that Three people that I know uh, have given it five stars. So I'm very excited to pick it up. And this is called The Eyes of the Best Part by Monica Kim. So it is a feminist psychological horror about the making of a female serial killer from a Korean American perspective. I've heard it's a bit gory, like with the eyes, obviously. Um, but you've got G1, life tumbles into disarray in the wake of her upper's extramarital affair and subsequent departure. Her mother distraught, her younger sister hurt and confused, her college freshman grades failing, her dreams horrifying yet enticing. So in them, Jiwon walks through bloody rooms full of eyes, succulent blue eyes, surveillating blue eyes, eyes the same shape and shade as George's, who is Amar's obnoxious new boyfriend. So, very excited and interested in this one. This next book, I believe, comes out on June 25th, and it's by Christina Lauren. I have a love-hate relationship with this pair of authors, so I don't know how I'm going to go, but it is a Disney Rapunzel retelling. It's called Tangled Up in You. It's a romantic modern reimagining of Tangled. So this is the fourth book in the Meant to Be series that has been written by a bunch of different authors. And you've got Ren, who has never held an iPhone, Googled the answer to a question or followed her crush on social media. What she has done, read a book or two or three, okay, hundreds. She's taught herself to paint, built a working wind power system from scratch. But for all the books she's read, Ren has never found the one that's taught a woman raised on a homestead and off the grid for most of her 22 years how to live in the real world. So now she's going to Corona College. It feels like her life is finally beginning. And then you've got Fitz, who has the rest of his life mapped out. He wants to graduate from Corona at the top of his class, get his criminal record wiped clean, and pass himself as the rich, handsome player everyone thinks he is. He's a few months short from checking off step one of his plans when Ren Gilden, with her cascading blonde hair and an encyclopedic brain, crashes into his life. And for the first time, Fitz's plan is in jeopardy. 
So I'm very excited for that. Tangled is probably one of my favorite Disney princess movies. So yes, I hope Christina Lauren has done it justice. Next we have Sleep Like Death by Kaylin Bayron. I have read Cinderella is Dead by this author, so I'm very excited for this Snow White reimagining. It's going to be queer. It's going to be about a black, Cinder uh, black Snow White. So only the truly desperate and foolish seek out the knight, an ancient monster who twists wishes into curse. Eve knows this firsthand. One of her mothers was cursed by the knight and trapped in the body of a songbird. With the unique abilities to communicate with animals and conjure weapons from nature, Eve has trained all her life to defeat him. With more and more villagers harmed by the knight's corrupt deals, Eve believes she's finally ready to face him. But when Queen Regina begins acting strangely, talking to seemingly no one, isolating herself, and lashing out at the slightest provocation, Eve must question if her powers are enough to save her family and her kingdom. That sounds good. Next is probably one that everyone's been talking about, everyone is excited for, and I myself am excited for. I love this author. I love her romance and her spin on them. And this is A Novel Love Story by Ashley Poston. So we've got Eileen Merriweather, who is a book girly. She loves getting lost in a book. She feels safe in a book at home. When her car unexpectedly breaks down on the way to the annual book club retreat that she goes to, she finds herself stranded in a quaint town that feels like it's right out of a novel. Because it is. So she's been thrust into her favorite romance series and she meets the grumpy bookstore owner who has mint green eyes and an irritatingly sexy mouth and impe an impeccable taste in novels, but she doesn't remember him from the books. So hmm, that's very interesting. Very excited to see what Ashley Poston does with that. Next, we have the third book in the Jacksonville Rays series. I have yet to read one and two, but I have read That One Night, which was the prequel novella, and that was hot and steamy. I'm trying to get into my hockey romance era, even though I think everyone is now in their cowboy romance, I'm slowly catching up. So this is about Poppy St. James, and she is going to kill Lucas Novik. Nokov? Novikov? She's just landed her dream job as the director of public relations for the NH NHL's newest expansion team, the Jacksonville Rays. But the team owner has only granted me a one-year contract. If I want to stay, I have to prove myself. Easy. Public relations is in my blood. Turns out it's harder than she thinks. You've got the party boy defenseman, Lucas, who doesn't care how well he plays hockey. No, she doesn't care how well he plays hockey. Um, off the ice, he's a PR nightmare. So very excited. Oh, okay. This is... it. Looks like there is a trigger warning for accidental pregnancy, so I'm telling you guys this now. But it looks like Pucking Sweet is a spicy MMF workplace hockey romance featuring accidental pregnancy in a love triangle until it's not with positive queer representation. Emily Rath, I think, I read her story on like how she went from like literally nothing, wrote uh, the first Pucking book, and then now like look where she is and she's writing all these amazing like queer books with amazing representation i'm very excited to read all of this together once i get to it and then last but not least on june 30th we've got invitations which is by cm Nascosta. this is the third book in the girls weekend series that if you have read morning glory milking farm this is about the minotaur's neighbor the orc and the elf. So their first book uh, called Girls Weekend, that's where they met. The second book I haven't read yet, but I'm assuming it's like where they meet each other's parents and families and stuff. And the third book is their wedding. And I love this author. I literally will read anything she writes. So I'm very excited to read about the wedding for this elf and orc. Okay, so that should be it. That was 25 books coming out in June 2024. Let me know down below, are there any books on this list that you're excited for? Any books that wasn't on this list that you're excited for? I would love to know. This was filmed on my new camera, so hopefully it worked out well. I'm gonna find out when I edit it. 
But thank you so much for watching. If you did get to the end of this video, pop a book emoji for a novel love story in the comments below if you've got nothing else to say. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,